Hello, time travelers. I have a new Laura training method. Actually, I'm giving you guys two methods in this video. More on that in a sec. That may help you when you're trying to train a unique face. Like say, for example, your girlfriend or your wife, because all of the other Laura training videos you find on YouTube are mixing what you're training with what's already in the checkpoint model that you're using to generate images. This is my look of disapproval. Check out these examples. I went over these in my previous video, but basically th what you're gonna get out of this is that none of these test generations are blending with that same celebrity face that's already in the checkpoint. This is Amber Mid Thunder. Here's Anna de Armas. Here's an Amber Mid Thunder picture by itself. Here's Anna de Armas by itself. Here's Sophia Hasmic. I don't have a graph showing you a bunch of examples because I need to work on the uh, training data for this. Because some of the generations are coming out with splotchy with stuff on the face like that. I got it to do better, but that's going to be a whole other video once I figured out how to stop doing this. Because while I was Googling it, I discovered other people were having the same problem. First, let me show you what I mean by not blending with the celebrity's face that's already in the checkpoint. So let's see, I have Realistic Vision version 6 up here. And I have this Laura referenced right here. Over here, I have what's called the instance prompt, which is, if you've seen my videos about how to train Lauras, then you know what that is. If not, then you're gonna have to click the card over here and check that out after this video. But this is an, a token that's inside of the Laura that when you use it, it knows that the face data comes from inside of that Laura. You could do this and put like 50% like that and call in 0.5, so you mix it 50-50. And this is the token inside the Laura, and this is the celebrity that's known by whatever checkpoint you're using. And it's kind of like a roll of the dice. Some checkpoints have better training for celebrity faces than others, but it doesn't help you if you want to hone in and make it perfect, or if you've got a unique face that you're trying to train that's not a celebrity or whatever. Here's another one. Quick example, I've got this Amber Mid Thunder image over here. I'm gonna hit send a text to image. And you see again, it's not blending. It doesn't have her full name to reference whatever's inside of the checkpoint in there. I do have a with blend example. I can drag that over and show you. And see, it's another one like that where you're blending. And I have done tests where I've turned this down to 0.25 and this up to 75% and did vice versa. Double checking my notes, it the, the name of the guy who is a total gent, and he's totally patient, his name's Salman Munwar, and he was on a couple of my live streams, and we've been going back and forth collaborating with different ideas for training Loras. I got a lot of people telling me their process for training Loras in comments on my videos, but they leave one or more details out. Because if you have a special process, I need to know the number of images in the training set, number of repeats, the batch size and the number of epochs and he told me this and i tested his process and i trained like i think five different faces but two of them i was able to get to where i didn't need to blend with the face anymore hey guys this is me from another time just call me future me i originally recorded this video with only one example salman monoir and i were working on a different solutions and i ended up making a discord chat and we went there and he came up with another solution so this video has that solution as well. But as you can already tell, I had to record in two different sessions. And now I have to edit all that together. Note, this video assumes that you already know how to train Loras. Because this video goes over additional settings. If you haven't seen my previous videos on Loras, you may want to do that. Recently I got my Patreon set up, so I will have some basic Laura settings for you guys to look at. And if you want to try those and maybe change a couple things or whatever, but those are going to be for paid patrons, even starting on the bottom level of just dollar a month. Hey, it's future, future me in editing. I changed my mind. Because I love you guys so much, Heart shapes. I'm going to make all my basic standard Laura training configs free on my Patreon. Join my Patreon, and then I'll send you a link to where they're at. As I go over to different things in this video, obviously I'm going to have timestamps marked down at the bottom. So I recommend watching the whole video from beginning to end to get a bigger concept of what we're trying to do here. And then as you're trying to do a specific thing, come back and watch the part that you're working on. And the two examples, one's really, really slow. It could take like 11 or 13 hours to do training. 
But in my previous video, I mentioned that's how I was able to do no blend Lauras, where you're not blending the trained face with the face of the same celebrity in the checkpoint. And it worked out really great for some of my tests. And the second one is much, much faster. It only takes about three to six hours, depending on the settings you choose. But why doesn't it only take 20 minutes like all the other YouTubers to talk about stable diffusion, Rob? Well, because they're blending their trained data with that person's face that's already in the checkpoint. That's cheating. They may not realize they're doing that, though. But now, on to the video. So based off of his training process, I'm going show you quickly what I did on one of my trainings. And then I'm going to show you where it is in Koya. So 82 images and 19 repeats. We'll do a calculator here. That's 82 times 19. So that's making the target around 1,500 steps. But he's also using 10 epochs. This is interesting because this means you have times 10. You have potentially this many steps. And then I added some other settings so that I could test different intervals in between the epochs to grab the one that worked best. I'll show that to you. And he's also using a batch size of three, which will help people with eight gigabyte VRAM cards. Because when I ran it, it only used seven gigabytes of VRAM. And I also tested it on a RTX 3070 and the training ran fine. And why I pointed over there is because <laughs> that computer's in the kitchen, but don't mind me. Now I'm gonna go over method one, which I'm calling the long method. I need to mention that it uses LR schedule constant and optimizer Atom W8 bit. Even though I already went over this in previous videos, the other method in this video uses Lion as the optimizer, and you'll find out why later. Now let's go over where the settings are in Koya. So we've got Koya loaded up here. Obviously you're in LoRa and training and parameters. That's where everything you need to do to do this type of setup lives. Set your training batch size to three, and we put 10 epochs over there so that it will keep doing this whole process 10 times and then stop. Go to the advanced tab after you've set these two things and look for down here close to the bottom on the right. You're gonna wanna set minimum SNR gamma to five. That's gonna make your colors and your lighting pop out better. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, that was my previous video. You can click over here to watch that. But back up here at the top, this is what I did and this is how I was able to grab an interval out of all the training and tried that one. However, you're gonna need anywhere from 30 to 60 gigabytes free of hard drive space in order to do a test like this. But it doesn't matter because in the end you delete the ones you don't want. Uh, we're still on the advanced tab and you go down a little bit and you see save every n steps. You put a 100 in there. You hit save and you run your training. So I'm gonna show you an example of all the lower files that are output. So here's my Anna de Armas folder. If I go into my LoRa 1024 SDXL folder, this is when I was testing SNR for my previous video. And so here's with SNR, here's without. And it always saves this one right here. See how it was a bunch of zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are epochs. I never use those, so I'll, we'll just delete those. Go up here and delete my SNR ones, whatever. I should mention this part. Since I was talking about save every n steps and putting a 100 in there, sometimes I put a 50 right there. If during my testing, I see that one output looks pretty good and the next one looks like it's overtrained, I wanna see what happens in between those two. It's all up to you what you put here really. But since you're doing that to save hard drive space, you want to scroll back up and go over to basic and go over to where it says save every n epochs and change that to zero. You don't need to save a file every epoch if you've got files saved for every n number of steps, right? But when it does the steps, it puts dash, step, and then the number of the step at the end, okay? So this is where I run Stable Diffusion SDXL out of my Stable Diffusion Web UI SDXL dev folder. But if we go into here and go to models, and then LoRa, I keep everything organized with folders. If we go to SDXL. And then that is a future video. Tell me if you're interested. I don't want to say this word and get monetized, but Stable Diffusion doesn't know how to do body shapes. We'll just leave it at that. This is testing for that, getting the body shape right. It's not NSFW or anything like that. We're going to SNR. This is where I was doing my SNR testing. Here's Anna de Armas because that's the one I'm showing you the example of right now. And I just drop them all in there, okay? 
So let's say I just want to try to figure out which is the best ones to test. There's a couple different methods and they're not 100%. It's, it's hard to explain, but you try one way and then you try another way until you find the, the best one you get. So now we're gonna test the outputs and we need to start with TensorBoard. I'm gonna be demonstrating it here in the video. Well, past me is. Please forgive past me because I load TensorBoard the hard way, but loading it the hard way makes loading it the easy way make more sense. Anyways, I've talked about TensorBoard in previous videos, but we actually have a practical use for it now. I'm actually going to hit Control C to terminate Koya because I don't need it anymore for this. And you see how this says VENV? That means the Python environment is still running inside of this command line window, and I don't want it anymore. So there is a script they built in here to deactivate it. It's in a folder. So you type BENV backslash scripts backslash deactivate. I just hit tab to autocomplete and hit enter. You need to deactivate in between loading TensorBoard. CD VNV backslash scripts. So it's CD, which means change directory, and then the full path of the folder you want to go to. So in this case, it's BENV backslash scripts and hit enter. Now I'm in that folder. It's tensorboard space dash dash log dir space. And then I'm going to put a double quote. I'm going to go back to my Anna to Arms training folder and open up this log folder right here and hit Alt D and then Control C. Alt D gets my cursor up there and Control C is copy. I don't want these two. They're older tests that didn't work so good. And then I fixed her training data by deleting some bad pictures and downloading some better ones. But I'm going to show you how we can ignore those in a minute. And I got the logger there. I'm going to right click and hit paste. I put a double quote at the end and press enter. This takes only about a minute or two to load TensorBoard. Now we copy paste this. Go up here. There we go. And I just unchecked those older trainings I don't want to look at. I have a faster and easier way for you guys to load up TensorBoard every time you need to use it. I'm in my Koya folder. As you can see, I'm in my AI stuff, Stable Diffusion, Koya, Koya underscore SS. And I have TensorBoard.bat right there. I'm going to delete it so I can show you where that comes from and how you guys can get it and use it. This is a GitHub page that I set up. And it's just a very simple script. I'll even load it up to show you what it does. This section here double checks that it's in a Koya folder and everything it needs to do its thing is there. And then it asks you to give it the log folder and then it does some verifying to make sure everything is cool it runs a script that's already in koya to deactivate the python environment and then it runs another script in koya to activate the environment and why that's important is because if you already have a tensor board loaded you need to clear it out of memory before you load another one otherwise it's going to show you the data from the other one or a weird mix and then it runs the tensor board executable that's inside of koya telling it your log directory so what you want to do is go to my GitHub repo, hit code, download zip. And I have my browser set up to always ask me where to download things. But you're going to put it inside of your Koya underscore SS folder. I'm just going to hit save there. Here it is. Open that up. Open up the folder inside and drag tensorboard.bat out. I have Koya loaded up for demonstrating stuff in this video, so I don't want to unload it. But typically what I do is I hit control C to break this because it's already in this folder, right? And then I type tensorboard.bat. But I'll just demonstrate by opening up another command line window right here. Open command window here. So open up command line window to that folder any way you want to. Some people like typing CMD up here and pressing enter. I don't like doing that. Anyways, once I'm in here, make sure this folder is the correct folder. You just type TensorBoard or type T-E-N-S and press tab to autocomplete and press enter. Now it asks you for the log folder. All right, check this out. Now I've got a folder with a lower file on all of its things like I normally do. And there's a log folder in there. I'm open that up. I hit Alt D, which puts the cursor up there. Hit Control C to copy. Alt Tab to get me back over to that command line window and right click to paste. And now it's deactivating the environment, activating the environment and running TensorBoard. This can take anywhere from like three to five minutes for it to actually load. Oh, there we go. It's already done. I'm gonna copy that, but I already have it as a bookmark right here. So I opened up a new tab by pressing Control T, and then I just clicked that. So here's yellow ones without SNR, and the pink one is with SNR. So let's just assume you only did with SNR because I recommend it. What we want to look for is where it jumps down and then starts to come back up. This is where the loss goes down. So in this case, the step number was 1202. 
That's pretty high. But this is where I did some testing to see if 1200 was the one I want. That's why I have 1200 up here in the file name. Actually, let me re-explain that. Once I determine which step I like, I put that step in the file name. But this is me confirming it. So we st I went back a few to test 800. I went all the way up and then I looked, okay, 1200 and the details in her cheeks and her eyes and her eyebrows are better in 1200 versus 1100. And then 1300, it looked like a little too detailed and it got even worse for 1400 and 1500. But this is how you're going to cover your bases if looking at the tensor board doesn't tell you a good spot. Is that you're going to test a range outside of that spot. Then grab the one you want to test and test just that LoRa file by itself. But first I'm going to show you how to do a test like this. So I'm back into my stable diffusion models LoRa and then subfolders that I made to organize. And do whatever method you want to open command line to this folder. Open command window here. So I've got this open. I'm just going to type dir slash b. Got a whole bunch. And let's say in this case I wanted to do SNR5 version that I made 800 through 2400. I would just go like this. Control C that. Hit Windows button R to get the run box. Type notepad and press enter. Paste that in. Grab this with Control C, Control H for find and replace. Make sure that's in there. Make sure there's a comma in there and hit replace all. Delete the last comma. Grab the redundant part that we don't want to duplicate. Hit Control C and then Control H. Tab down and erase that out. And hit replace all. Then I like to just hit end, delete, end, delete over and over again until I have this long line. And double check I don't have a comma at the end and delete that. And then I hit shift and home and then control and C. Then I'll go down here to script XYZ plot, change X type to prompt SR, paste that in, grab this, copy it, go to Laura, search. Well, here's Sophia Hasmic. This is a different instance of stable diffusion. But, anyways, let's say I was doing that one. Click that, put it in. Take whatever other lore I had in there, grab my instance prompt like this, and put it over here. Take my blend one out. So anyways, now we're going to talk a little bit more about testing the outputs to make sure your lores are not overfit, and I would run that. This is Heidi Pino. Oh, bets the god was trying to train her face. I think I mentioned that earlier. So much in my head for this video, can't remember every little thing. In this case, in order to make sure it wasn't overfit, I put holographic one-piece racing swimsuit, which never worked, and I think that's because it doesn't know what the frick I'm talking about. But when I put vibrant background with rainbow color palette, that was my way to test to make sure it could change something. Oh, duh, holographic one-piece racing swimsuit, and on a left, wearing black bikini from another prompt I found. So let's take that off. And why I put this is because often stable diffusion is bad at body shapes. Tell me in the comments if you look forward to, to me doing that in a future video. Don't put this word right there into the comments. Say, yes, I want to see a Laura training video for body shapes. I'll know what you mean. But the thing is the Laura does basically know the body shape. You just have to remind it to use the prompt text words that are in the keywords files inside of the training data. This is future me with an important note. Check out the Anna de Armas testing that I showed you guys earlier. I ended up deciding on step 1200, but when I prompted the test, I changed the hair color and the clothing and the background to stuff that was not in the training data. That's how you test if it's flexible. In this case, it was flexible all the way up till the end, but the jacket was looking crazy. The hair was looking like a little frayed and stuff. But you do this to make sure the Laura isn't becoming overfit and it's still flexible when you combine it with other Lauras and you do different types of prompts. I remember this one was 550 because that's 550 right there. Let's go over here and let's do 300 through 1000. That's a good range. Go over to this thingy. What's it? Bloop. Copied. Go down here. Don't need a detailer. Go down to prompt SR. Paste in that text there. Scroll back up. Change this number to 300 to match the first one that we put in, and I'm gonna hit Control Enter to generate. All right, test is done, and I should have put nipples, comma, NSFW in here in the negative prompt. But anyways, because 
I had to go in here and redact them. Let's see here, 550 is the one I decided to keep earlier based off of my previous testing. But it looks like 600 has even better results with the holographic swimsuit. Except her skin looks weird, and I remember that from my previous testing, that the skin looked a little funky. But the basic idea is that you're testing it, and you're testing around the range of where you think the training should have been completed. And that's how you get outputs like this, and pretty simple. It's just a lot of waiting. So go live your life! Like, when the, the training, for me, for doing one of these, was 11 hours. But it's totally worth it because I'm not going over and over and trying different methods and stuff. I'll just do this long one and then grab the one that looks the best and use that. And now this part's about the trick in Koya where you can have it output at every certain number of steps and not epochs. First, I want to show you why we're doing this. So in this example, I've got all these Sophia Hasmic samples that are being output during training. But if we look at the file names, you see where it says E and a bunch of zeros and a 9 and then 10. And then a 1 and then a 2. That's just because those are not in order. If I go up here to view and then hit details and then expand this over, I can see that these are different trainings with different names. So my SNR five when i was first testing min snr gamma a couple weeks ago that's when i learned about doing 10 epochs but it's only doing one sample every epoch and these were other trainings that i did with different settings or configurations or whatever but that's not what we want we want it to be more like this rachel riley testing i did later where we've got a couple samples now for some reason i don't remember how i did it but i had two samples output every 50 steps so you see 50, 50, 100, 100, 150, 150, 200, 200, so on, so forth. So I'm going to show you where that's at in Koya. So first of all, in LoRa, and then Parameters, and then Basic. Go over next to your training batch size and epoch. Make sure to save every n epochs is zero. Then go up and hit the Advanced tab. Scroll down just a little bit, where it says save every n steps. Choose whether you want 50 or 100. This is how often it's going to save a new LoRa file. Then go back up, and we're going to go to the Samples tab. And this is what actually motivated me to do a third recording session, even though it's already been epic trying to get all the little clips sorted into a sensible video. <sighs> Tell me in the comments if I did a good job so far. But you got to change the sample every n epochs to zero. And sample every n steps is 50 or 100 or whatever to match how many every n steps. I think if you have, for example, a 100 right here, and then for samples you have a 50, that's how you get it to save two samples for every X number of steps. And I'm also going to show you how we're going to get better samples output. This is like the default one. So if you want to just use the default one, that's fine. But you got to go in here and change at least a couple things. Go up to folders and grab your instance prompt like that. Copy it because we're about to paste it. Parameters, samples. You can go at the beginning or wherever and put that in and then a comma and a space. It already has the class prompt, which is woman. So that's good. You could change this or whatever. Here's a better example that I got from that dude on Discord that I've been blabbering on and on about. And if you'll read right here in the tiny text that we can do the width with dash dash W and the height with dash dash H. You can even change the C, the CFG scale, and the steps, and a negative prompt. He likes to use DDIM for his samples. Number of steps, 28. And the seed, he put in something there. And a CFG 7, which is normal. Height and width of 512 to match the training. And all of this is his negative prompt. I'm also gonna put a screenshot of this, as well as this text, in a file for my free Patreon subscribers. And all levels above that. If you pay, you get the free stuff as well. Now let's talk about method two, using Lion as the optimizer. This is the faster one because Lion trains faster, but it might be too fast. You can use it if you want, but if your Laura becomes overfit at too early in the steps, then you want to use the longer method. Or if you prefer to use a longer method first and it's taking too long to train the face that you're trying to do, then come back and use this one. So in Koya, I'm in Laura and then training, and we're gonna go to parameters. And first thing you'll notice is that train batch size is also three, just like the other method. 
but the epoch here i put four realistically you probably will only need three but i put four just in case and I have saved every N epochs to zero because I don't need to fill up my hard drive with extra files. You are already outputting a lore every 50 or 100 steps for whatever you chose over in the advanced tab. But just below the batch size and epoch, over here on the right, you want to change the optimizer to lion. And you can leave the learning rate scheduler to constant. And if anybody's wondering, the learning rate that we're using for both of these methods is a point with three zeros and then a one. Here, I'll zoom in really close on it in editing. Look at this. One, two, three, and a one. So I've been talking to this guy, oh, that's the god on Discord, and his username on GitHub is pmajor74, but he made this script right here to make it easier to do your XYZ plot testing for testing multiple LoRa's. So let's say, for example, I have this folder full of LoRa's. Here, I have Rachel Ritchie with outputs every 50. So I'm in my Stable Diffusion training folder where I keep a bunch of stuff that I use for inspecting trainings. I'm going to go to his GitHub repo, which, which obviously I'll have linked into descriptables below. Hit code, download zip. I'm already in the correct folder because I did it earlier and tested it before making this video. So I'm just going to hit save right over here. Now I'm going to right click this and hit properties and then hit unblock. Whenever you trust somebody's script, you should unblock it before you unzip it. Otherwise it might not work. Hit OK, but don't do this for shady stuff. Don't download shady stuff anyways. After that's done, I'm just going to right click this and hit extract here because when RAR puts in this button right here and GitHub makes folders for your zips. So now I have this new folder right there. Open that up and he's got a CMD file and a .py Python script. You want to run the .cmd and that opens the Python script GUI thing that he made. Right now it's set to LoRa. You could set it to embeddings as well. I'm going to go back to LoRa. So let's say I've got this folder of all these LoRa's for training for Rachel Ritchie's face. And let's say I wanted to test around 500. I might go back to 300 all the way up to 1,000 and could drag these all over there. And look at that. Magic! It's just already ready already. But let's say I didn't want to test every single one of these. So let's go over to Stable Diffusion, scroll down, and paste that in. And that's what that does. So why this is important, because when you're figuring out in your head a workflow of something you need to get done, you might have like a dozen steps in there. If one of those steps takes a long amount of time or has all these sub steps, you might forget your train of thought. Because the other way means you're opening up the folder, you're opening up a command line to that Listing folder, the directory of everything in the folder, copy pasting all that into the find and replace to change. Forget all that, I'm not doing that anymore. This is gonna probably save me hours of my life a month accumulated for each time i'm doing a test so i'll save my promo section for the end i've got a new patreon set up for you guys so you can get access to my lore files and training data depending on what tier you pay for i've got levels one two and three fight me in the comments but i think star trek is better than star wars and doctor who is the best huh <laughs> Once you subscribe to my Patreon and it pays out to me and the transaction clears, then tier three, you got this folder full of stuff. Tier two, you get less stuff, but obviously tier three can see the tier two folder and the tier one folder. Tier two's got stuff in there and tier one is pretty good still because you got my Laura's in there. As I said earlier in the video, I'm gonna make all my basic Laura config settings files free for anybody that joins my Patreon even at a free level, so head over there today. Anyways, I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. If you didn't see my video about the SNR Gamma, it's very interesting. You can see that right over here. If you're just watching this video and you're like, train a Laura, I, I, I might know how to do that or maybe I don't know, whatever, can you show me? Start with this video and then go from there. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking this thing over here. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.